What's going on guys, Shane here, I'm here with PJ. Oh yeah. Today we're talking about southpaw fighting strategy. So this pertains to you if you're a southpaw yourself fighting an orthodox fighter, or if you're orthodox fighting a southpaw fighter, because reality is, it's the same thing, it's just opposite, okay? People talk about the southpaw advantage, and what is that exactly? It's just that the southpaw has more experience. They've repped it out more times because there's more orthodox fighters in the world than there are southpaws, so they have the experience fighting these orthodox right-handed fighters, okay? So when I talk today, I'm not gonna use words like left or right, I'm gonna use inside and outside so that it pertains to you either way. Inside is gonna be when I'm getting towards the inside, which is PJ's chest side, and if I say outside, it's when I'm getting towards his, his back side. Okay. So with that being said, let's take a look at the first strategy. So the most common southpaw orthodox fighting strategy that most people are familiar with is keep your lead foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot, but you also want to keep your lead hand on the outside as well too. Manipulate that jabbing hand. One of the best southpaw kickboxers in the world is Giorgio Petrosian. Always manipulating that lead hand, keeping his hand on the outside and getting a more dominant position. So by keeping your lead hand on the outside, you know exactly where that jab hand is. You can push it down out of the way, come over top with jabs or down the pipe with crosses of your own. And as an orthodox fighter fighting a southpaw, it's a same thing, try to keep your foot on the outside, manipulate that jab hand, or come down the pipe with the rear straight. All right, next is defense against the jab. So you're gonna slip cross, stepping to the outside, and then follow up with another punch and a kick or another two punches, okay? So when that jab hand comes in, I'm taking my head off of the center line, stepping towards the outside, towards PJ's back, getting a better angle, and then following up with a hook and then a left kick, could be to the legs, could be to the body. And again, it's the exact same thing for an orthodox fighter. And southpaw throws that right jab, you're gonna slip to the outside, and you see PJ's really attacking the body because that's where the liver is, right? As a southpaw, the liver is gonna be a little bit closer for the right hand, the left hook, and then you can finish with an inside leg kick which hurt even more than outside leg kicks and now defense to a cross is going to be the same thing but with a drop step now you can move back on the drop step or you can move directly to the side it really depends on range and distance but it also depends on how straight that cross is if it's more of a looping rear hand then you really need to get your head out of the way and lower underneath of it so you're going to have a more exaggerated drop step either one foot or both feet will come off the ground according to the punch that is being thrown at you but you want to be quick on the counter as soon as your foot hits the ground boom you explode right back into your counter all right guys, thanks for watching. So it's all about knowledge and it's all about drilling it, all right? Making sure that when you see that jab, you know to slip cross. When you see that cross, you know the drop step, okay? Practice it, drill it, find a partner, and make it work. Guys, check out PJ at Train with PJ on Instagram and on Snapchat for motivation, inspiration, and workouts. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips. And I'm PJ. Self-defense for the underdog.